I didn't imagine it being this. I thought maybe one project, maybe two would be done and we're, we got four completely done and hundreds of others down the road. Con el disc golf, eh, pues yo he tenido una relación desde hace muchos años. Fue el primer deporte que yo intenté jugar con frisbee cuando tenía 12 años. Jugábamos por las calles de mi, de mi barrio, eh, pegándole a señales de, de tráfico, a árboles. Creía que Colombia en general y Medellín en particular tiene mucho potencial. I started playing disc golf about 12 years ago. And from the United States, I moved to Columbia five years ago. I told my friends at the Broward Disc Golf Club that I'm moving here and I'm planning to bring disc golf. So I asked for donations and ended up with about four, maybe 500 donated discs and a few folding baskets. My first apartment was real close to a facility in Medellin. A buddy of mine and I would set them up and play and eventually more and more people wanted to come by, look at the baskets, want to hold a disc. I would show them how to throw, leave them one of the disc or two, and then we would move to another spot and do the same thing. It was just a handful of the same people all the time with a new person once. My name is James Koizumi. I'm from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. I knew that I was traveling to Columbia, and so I looked to see if there were any courses there. On the U-Disc map, there was one single basket, and it happened to be in, in Medellin. But Ken had let me know that in Colombia, somebody that's working a very steady job six days a week may only make three, four, maybe $500 a month for the disc that we typically pay $15 or $20 for. By the time it gets to Colombia after shipping, it costs at least double. The sport that we take for granted sometimes, how easy and accessible or how affordable it is. A hardworking Colombian with a family or their entire family, it's very expensive. And Ken and I were talking how we could get the attention of you know, the world's best player and his foundation to help out Colombians get a course and get this community started. COVID-19. 2020 comes along, the pandemic, everybody's stuck inside, but the ultimate players are looking for something to do, but they're not allowed to play. My name is Alfonso Lopez, I'm from Medellin. Llevo en este amor por el frisbee alrededor de 50 años, con el ultimate, con el freestyle y ahora con el disc golf. ¿Qué pasó? Hace un año con, con lo de la pandemia empezó a surgir algo, eh, apareció Ken, eh, Nino de Bogotá, que Nino trabaja con promoción de los deportes con disco y como no había ultimate, pues empezó a buscar cosas y encontró el disc golf. Bueno, well, mi nombre es Hernando Zapata, everyone call me Nino. Two years ago when COVID strikes and we don't have more ultimate and we found options to continue playing, we found this golf and this golf found me and now we have a good relationship, I think so. <laughs> there is a key opportunity to create competition in the, in the country and I know the Colombian people love that. I know disc golf can grow here. I was just having a tough time by myself with these portable baskets without a car. Este, este parque lo administraba una entidad semi-privada y entrar aquí era muy difícil. Hace dos años lo tomó el Inder y eso abrió las puertas. Mi nombre es Gabriel Velázquez. Eh, trabajo con el Instituto de Deportes de Medellín, Inder. Cuando llega el disc golf lo vimos como la mejor plataforma para eh, articular lo que es el deporte y hacer deporte, actividad física eh, en un entorno, uh, un ambiente sano y tranquilo. El disc golf es perfecto, ¿por qué? Porque solamente necesitas un disco y ya, y solamente venir a un parque como estos y venir a lanzar. When you see a guy throwing something and back to the hands, it's like Okay, I, let me see if I can do that. They saw that you can throw very well, but they tried to throw and they don't do it. And now it's like the challenge. Okay, 
And as soon as they complete the challenge, now is my friend do that, why I cannot do it? And they can another. And suddenly in two months, there are four or five throwing. And suddenly in six months, they want to create a team. That was almost one year ago. And yeah, we are crazy. Look at where we are right now. <laughs> yeah. Mi nombre es Carlos Moncada, trabajo con la Liga Antioqueña de Disco Volador, que es como la organización a nivel departamental aquí en Antioquia. Eh, trabajamos con Ultimate, con Freestyle y pues ahora estamos en esta locura del disc golf. Con esta posibilidad tan grande que tenemos que nos da la fundación de Paul Madbet, pues para nosotros ha sido, como lo llamamos, una bendición, una bendición del de arriba. Pero bueno, con Ken, Ken nos ha enseñado un montón, pero nunca habíamos tenido como esa posibilidad de acercarnos a alguien que compitiera, que suba, que, que perdón, que está ahí eh, compitiendo en lo más alto, pues, y el mejor del mundo. Como a fortalecer toda esa parte de no solamente llegar a jugar, sino proyectarnos. O sea, queremos ir a un mundial de disc golf. Ya nos estamos imaginando y con esta conexión con la fundación para nosotros, pues, significa mucho porque es, es tener la posibilidad de aprender de los mejores. O sea, a ustedes los vemos como los mejores. A Paul lo vemos como el mejor del mundo y a ustedes como organización los vemos como los mejores. Entonces para nosotros ustedes son como eh, eh, eso a donde queremos llegar. Ah, Carlos. came into Colombia not really with any expectations. As soon as I got off the airplane, go through the mountain before entering the city of Medellin, and it was one of the most beautiful cities I've ever seen in my life. All right, so this is hole one. And when we designed this course, we wanted to make it very beginner friendly. Next year, they'll want to go to the US and play in tournaments. So I tried to incorporate a nice variety of throws. Some are forehand, some are backhand. A double mando, we have a hazard to simulate a water hazard. Great shots, tunnel shots. It's very beginner friendly, but it's still challenging enough for us. I really like that it's like close to the street. The town right here can, can see it and get interested. The course design is very easy. It's smaller, but it's a lot of fun to play, but it's easy to get to, easy to maneuver, go around. So if people see others playing disc golf, they might be like, oh, what's that? And just come over and pop over and just start playing disc golf. And people who are walking along here want to know what we're doing, so we let them throw a few discs. We'll see them later. It's a really good spot, and I think it's going to help disc golf grow here in the Medellin area. I was used to playing on the, the DGA Mach 3 baskets or Mach 4 baskets. So I had an idea in my head how they were designed. I definitely wanted to have where the chains can move up and everything. Wanted it to be sturdy. It's blown me away. It's exceeded every expectation possible. They're all pushing each other. They all want to see disc golf grow and they want to continue to put more courses here in Colombia and South America. So it's going to be really cool to see where they go because they want to get better quickly. They don't just want to play for fun. Thanks. 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 I hope it, uh, meets your approval. <laughs> oh, no, this is great. Your, your goal here is to grow disc golf. Of course, doesn't have to meet any of my approval or get anything from me as long as it's helping you and your community and helping grow disc golf. Ah. That's all that matters. That's, That's all that we're looking for. Some of these guys have already made an alternate tease to yeah. do uh, Gorilla Golf. And that, that's, I think that's the big goal is, is making it, uh, you know, making them want it and feel like it's theirs. Right. It's not ours, it's your guys's, so. Okay. They obviously have dreams of being a pro one day, but I keep telling them that no, we're not the pros. We're too old to be that, those guys yet. But there is a pro here in Colombia. We got to find him. He's probably 12 years old, 13 years old, or she. That's our job as a club, is to make enough courses to get these kids playing. Two or three of them are going to be good enough to be eventually chasing Paul off a card. Hola, mi nombre es Matías, tengo 13 años. Conocen como campeón de los juniors porque 
todavía tengo 13 años y prácticamente soy un niño. Me, me enteré de Pac-Man Red eh, por eh, videos, por videos de competencias que estaban jugando él y otros eh, señores. Entonces, que él me contaba que era el campeón del mundo y que era muy bueno. Entonces, eh, eh, yo he visto muchos de él jugando y luego lo conocí por cuando me enteré de, la, de lo de la fundación. Ah, que muchos nervios y alegría porque, uff, una palma, 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 To see someone that you see it only by a screen, okay, is, is a person, is normal. It's possible to do it. I think that is the most valuable thing that they can saw. There is not an impossible level to reach. That is so like, okay, I can reach that. I think that for me is, is vital. So when you reach back, you're gonna reach with your toe at the same time. And you, what the most common mistake you see is a flat open foot. A lot of the female players have ultimate experience. From what I hear, they're one of the top ultimate teams in the world. Having that kind of presence here on a disc golf course is incredible. To see how quickly they're learning disc golf. They just love being active and playing sports. Seeing these women coming out and um, having that drive is just super cool for me because they have such great potential because they already have the mental game for sports. They already have um, that love and desire to compete. And so just seeing that here has been awesome. I love teaching that group how to improve their game and maybe take it to the next level. Could these women get to world someday? Could they compete in the professional division from Colombia? I mean, that would, for me, be like a dream come true. I would love to see that. Okay, my name is Maria Fernanda. Everyone calls me Mafe. I play Ultimate Frisbee for almost 20 years. We just started with uh, this golf this year, like in March, in April, because of the COVID. We didn't have too, much, too many spaces to play Ultimate. Some people introduced us to uh, this golf and we just fell in love. We started training here almost every day, if possible. Sometimes we have just like two or three days a week. At the beginning, when we started here, we started with few portable baskets. But now that we have the permanent ones, it makes a huge difference because we can come even alone to train, something that we couldn't do before. is motivating more people uh, having all this permanent course here. Oh, yeah. Sí. Oh, yeah. Buena. When I pitched this idea to Inders and different mayors of different pueblos, I explained that it's good for a wide range of people. Anybody who can walk two kilometers and throw a frisbee can play disc golf. So it's good from age five to 65 or 75. All right, so th this is the, the town of Iridota. We've been playing at different locations, but once they realize that their disc golf is going to be something here, they keep finding us new spaces to play. So this is the one that they, they showed us about a month ago. I fell in love with it right away. They gave us the permission. Once I mentioned that we could possibly hold tournaments here and things like that, they gave us the permission to put in the four tee pads, let the mayor look at it. He gave the approval to finish the course now. So it's really nice for us. As soon as I got there, it just made me feel like I was at uh, the Grand Canyon in Florida. Um, you know, that's an old limestone quarry, lots of big drops and hills, water hazards, big trees. With these properties, is, especially if they're not busy, you make the course your own. Yeah. There's baskets there. I want to throw across the park and play a par five or a par six. Right. You can do that. Long open fairways and shots, as well as long tunnels and such. Uh, 10 through 18 can be your long, long pads. pads. Ah, so good. now you have an 18 hole loop. Right. And the thing with nine holes too is, it's always going to look crowded. Mm. You know, it'll always look packed. And that's what you want. You want right. it to be crowded, because then you can be like, hey, city, look at this. Right, the mayor like, will say that. <laughs> yeah, we, we need another. more room. Right. This is taken off. From what I hear, they're going to possibly get more land there and make like a, a really mm. solid professional course, because they got the beginner course here. And mm. then over in Hirodota, the town, the mayor, all of them want to almost make a disc golf destination up there. Yeah, from what I see so far, again, I don't know how big the property is, but there's a lot of potential out here to have like a, a really, really, really good course. This is Jiao. He's uh, very instrumental. He was a ultimate coach. He teaches children 
probably 20, 30 every week. Mi nombre es Jair Iguita. Actualmente trabajo con el Instituto de Deporte en el municipio de Girardota. Conocí el disc golf por medio de pandemia, ¿cierto? Como una nueva alternativa en el momento donde los alumnos no podían salir y hacer el, practicar el último. Cada que hay un niño y ve lanzar un disco, este se antoja. Y no solo él, también antoja a sus amistades, a su padre, a su mamá. He speak with the mayor of the of Girardota and tell him like, okay, this is a good opportunity to create the first disc golf in the in the city of Girardota. A todos los que aportan para que esto se haga un sueño, una realidad. Cada aporte es valioso para nosotros. No solo fui yo. Not only him, not only Ken. As you can see, there is a lot of people around here, close that they put a lot of effort to make this reality. Porque todavía no no logro imaginar lo que este puede llegar a crecer. Cinco veredas donde yo con esto he ido practicando. This is not the only place, and this is a plenty of this kind of spaces that yeah, they see the potential to be a very powerful disc golf area for Colombia. Eh, mi nombre es Juan David Murillo Agudelo, eh, yo hago parte de acá de nuestro, del municipio de Girardota, Taron queda cerca de la ciudad principal de Medellín. Yo hago parte de la Corporación Social Bienestar. ¿Qué es la Corporación Social Bienestar? Es una entidad sin ánimo de lucro que desarrolla actividades de aprovechamiento del tiempo libre y educación no formal con niños, jóvenes, adultos y adultos mayores. They really like the idea of hosting tournaments here and bringing in other foreigners. That's a long-term goal of ours, and maybe in a year or two, is to have an international tournament where we draw in international players, build some hotel rooms and help these little towns. Para poder con esto crear un complejo deportivo que es amigable con el medio ambiente, juntemos estas manos amigas y saquemos este deporte adelante, proyectemos esto a que realmente le llegue a la gente y que genere algo importantísimo también, turismo. Porque es que cuando llegan personas de otro lado a visitarnos, a conocer nuestro municipio y a darse la oportunidad de jugar, hay una integración social alrededor de eso que le permite realmente a Girardota crecer. La corporación pone también toda la logística, todo el apoyo eh, económico en ciertas actividades que se desarrollan y Paul nos hizo todo el proceso de donación para poder hacer realidad este primer campo completo de Isgol en Sudamérica, que es una noticia que ustedes nos contaban y que para nosotros la verdad es un placer poder hacerlo realidad. People talk about growing the game and the Macbeth Foundation being here and building courses, but this is more than just growing the game. This golf is a vehicle to build communities, to extend relationships. That transcends the game, that transcends the sport, and to be a part of the Paul Macbeth Foundation has been incredible. For all our history of, of, of many conflicts, it gives you a lot of values. Teaching like kids in the less uh, favorable neighborhoods, I think is a very good way to bring kids closer to the sport. You have to focus, you have to train, you have to improve yourself. Right now we are taking a lot of schools here to play, for training and to do small tournaments and I think it's, it's gonna is going to have a very, very good influence in the city. When we tell them, we tell them to the community that there will be a complete campus of golf in South America with 18 holes, the expectations are very high. And the truth, everyone wants, principally the children and the young people, to be able to come to our campus. Because they find there a real alternative to invest their time. You already know that in our country, the social conditions in many occasions are very difficult in our country, and to find out how to invest their time in this very difficult y encontrar en eso eh, cómo invertir su tiempo libre realmente es un punto muy importante y que genera mucho desarrollo social. We are planning big, big stuff. Not only for Colombia, we also want to be the gate for all Latinoamérica. Let's share things that happen in this beautiful continent with all the world. 
Big shout out to Ledstone for making this trip possible, supporting the Paul Macbeth Foundation because without them, we would not have been able to be here. There's been so much support by manufacturers, sponsors, people. Just a huge shout out to everyone that's been a part of the, the foundation. This is 10 months into something that's probably gonna go beyond all our lives. Así que, eh, pues, el, el campo es una bendición de la vida, pues, y de que muchas cosas confluyeron y aquí estamos muy contentos con tenerlos a todos por acá. Jal had the idea of making extremely short pads, maybe a pink color or a turquoise color for the little kids that he teaches so that they can still have par threes. There you go, Joey. Go in. Oh, bad break. A veces. This is hole 10, we call it the mango hole. Okay. There's a, surrounded by small mango trees, but there's a window in the top that you can hise it right in. Oh, nice. And when the mayor gives you the green light to say, yeah, you know what, we don't need that soccer field, we're a disc golf course, that's like... Yep. That was, when I heard that for the first time, like before we came here, I was like, wow, who convinced some South American mayor that disc golf could be bigger than soccer?